Um, I started out um, eating the standard American diet um, out of interest and in, which pertains to my story is that my mom was vegetarian from the time I was young and still continues to be this day to this day, excuse me. And um, I grew up eating sort of, you know, in the 70s and 80s, the pop tarts and standard American, I can't believe it's not butter. And I was a pretty chunky kid. Um, and I ended up being going away to boarding school at when I was 15. And I got into health and fitness then. And in boarding school, I was uh, I I began to eat a lot more meat, ironically, because you know you basically get what you're fed in boarding school and don't have a choice. And they at that time were feeding a lot more meat. And I became very athletic. I, I was on the crew team for my high school and then into university, and also played basketball, varsity basketball, and things like that. So I was pretty healthy when I was in my uh, sort of late teens. Of course, when you go to university, I ended up going to university in Canada because that's where my father's from. Um, you know, you sort of have the Frosh 15, which I think turned into about the Frosh 50 for me. I put on a lot of weight, you know, I was doing what most freshmen in university do and drinking and eating the wrong things. But about the same time, I met a young lady who happened to be vegetarian. And I think back in the early 90s, that was pretty impressive for her because there wasn't a lot of vegetarian stuff out there. And it just so happened we went out to a restaurant together when I was first dating and just first dating her and we both, I got salmonella poisoning. So basically what happened is I went vegetarian after that because it was a pretty bad case. It was reported in the local newspaper, this restaurant, it had a pretty bad salmonella outbreak and it was in the, it was, it happened to be in the chicken. Um, and just for ease of eating and everything, we, I became vegetarian at the time. I kept fish in my diet and eggs, which she had kept. Um, she didn't have any fish at the time. And that continued on for a great deal of my life, decades, in fact. Fast forward to when I graduated university, got out of, uh, you know, got into the working world. I got back to Bermuda and, you know, again, was not eating the best diet, still putting on a lot of weight um, and met my now wife. And we, she saw the way that I was eating and said, you know, I've heard a lot about this vegan diet. Why don't we try it out and see how it goes? She, we both did it and, and that was 2014 and we saw good results to start with. And I firmly believe the reason we saw good results is because as a, from listening to you, Dr. Baker is because I got off all the processed garbage that I had been eating up until that point. And my wife is pretty good. She, um, she actually became certified as a plant-based chef, a vegan chef. We watched all the movies, all the documentaries, forks over knives, game changers, all those things and bought into the, the whole agenda and cleaned out our cupboards and ate whole foods plant-based for the whole time that we were vegan. And we, we were really strict. There's a lot of folks that say, oh, James, you must not have been doing it right. Because when I you know, eventually got very ill, I, um, I, I can tell them with my hand on my heart, that we did it really as best we could. And I supplemented B12 and all the things you're supposed to do and read about that. It was about the fifth year that my, my health went off a cliff. Um, I started to notice signs when I was at my current, uh, sorry, at, at the job I was at at that time, which was 2019, late 2019, of brain fog. And I started to get body pain coming in, a lot of fibromyalgia symptoms. Uh, my memory was getting worse. I remember sitting, I had to study for some exams for my job. And I just couldn't remember anything. I'm like, this is not me. I, I did well in school. I said, maybe this is a sign of getting older. <laughs> Little did I know the, the worst was yet to come. Um, Basically, what happened from there on out is my condi my conditions deteriorated. I started to notice my skin was cracking, uh, my nails were cracking, and my hair was falling out. I got severe constipation, um, and when I say severe, it was severe. And um, and I ended up with blood in my stools right before the pandemic hit. So, what my GP, who had been testing me the whole way along, because uh, ironically, my GP at the time was telling me, "You're on the best diet. This is." This just shouldn't be happening to you. We're not sure. Maybe it's an autoimmune disease. I was being, I, I had more blood drawn. I, I called myself a human pincushion for two years. I had so much blood drawn from me. Eventually, I ended up having to go overseas where they gonna, were going to schedule me for a colonoscopy, colonoscopy, excuse me, because they figured I had uh, ulcerative colitis. However, just they run uh, stool samples before they perform the procedure and found out I had a very rare bacterial infection. Uh, Shigella, um, and they couldn't perform the procedure. All this time, I had been put on disability leave from my job because I was too fatigued, too ill to work. I was losing weight at a rapid weight. I got down to my lightest weight was 127 pounds at six foot two, which was severely emaciated. I ended up pretty much bed bound and 
ended up losing my job as the pandemic hit because, and, you know, they said it was because of uh, tenure at the company, but I firmly believe because they knew I couldn't work any longer. Um, they let about 14 of us go at the time and I was amongst one of them. So I had no job, no insurance. Um, I was bleeding every time I went to the bathroom. Um, uh, I was severely depressed and anxious and didn't really have any avenue or and no insurance as well. I, I had no idea how to get out. What next, what, what transpired next uh, changed my life. Uh, and Dr. Baker, I finally get a chance together to say, I want to thank you specifically, sir, for all that you're doing, because what you did for me was life-changing. Excuse me. And I firmly believe that I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for folks like you. I came let me just preface this by saying, with my vegan dogmatic mind, I doubled down on the vegan diet thinking this was what was going to heal me. And what really pushed me over the edge is I came across a physician online who was prescribing eating these smoothies three times a day, which were chia seeds, a bag of kale and spinach and fruit with turmeric thrown in there. And I blended these things up three times a day. And literally, I almost killed myself. I was hospitalized. Um, um, I kept passing out. I had every time I used the bathroom was it was very bloody. I had candida fungal infections and tinnitus, and I looked like death. In fact, people often commented when they saw me, they thought I had something much worse, if you can imagine. I came across a presentation online, Sally Norton, um, uh, you know, the overconsumption of plants, and that little spark for me changed my mindset and said, you know, I could have been doing this all incorrectly. And then began the rabbit hole of me going down and figuring out, you know, had I been doing this vegan diet all wrong, could plants have been harming me? And then of course I came across you, sir, on Joe Rogan and the rest, as they say, is history. I began to go the keto route and through Sally and her wisdom, lowering my oxalate intake of vegetables and slowly becoming carnivore. And Today, I can put my hand on my heart and say every one of those symptoms that I had close to near near death, I can promise you, and my wife, if she was in the room, would corroborate that, um, have disappeared. I, I still experience you know, oxalate dumping frequently, but uh, the only thing left is tinnitus for me, which still is, is around. But I, I just, again, sir, want to say thank you for all that you do because it means a lot. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, thank, thanks for sharing that. And and this is why I do what I do for for reasons just like this because I think a lot of people are just you know suffering unnecessarily. Perhaps um, I want to just go back because there's a lot of things that are in there. But first, I want to ask you about your crew because as you know, I do a lot of rowing. So, where, what were you rowing as lightweight? Where, where were you at six two? You're kind of in between. You could be a heavyweight or lightweight. I'm not sure what what what, what you rode at. Um, I was running as, as a lightweight, I guess, because I was in an eight boat. Um, so I was um, the sixth seat in an eight boat and we won the Ontario, the Canadian championships that year, which was really great. Um, so I was, and I had to cut weight quite a bit to make 165 pounds was right, that. So yeah. it must've been lightweight. Right. Yeah. Cause I, I, cause when you mentioned you got down to 127, I was going to say, if you were a heavyweight, you'd be like 220. So that would be a hell of a drop. So, um, so you got all the way down to 127 pounds. Where you said you you gained about fifty pounds, so where where did you end? Those? So you were like two hundred and twenty pounds at some point. Where, where were you at at your heaviest? Yes, sir. I was about two hundred and fifteen at my heaviest, and um, I, I have some photos of those days as well. And you know, I look back. It was I got into the working world, and I was working in in insurance for for many years, and it, it pays well. And of course, every Friday night you go out for happy hour with the guys, and you'd be drinking, and the next morning you'd be hungover and eating all the wrong foods again. So yeah, that's yeah. how. That's yeah, how I, I ended up so. putting a weight. Get it, I got it, sir. And and so I mean, uh, and this is why you were a vegetarian. You were doing that stuff, correct? You've done a vegetarian, but you were eating, you know, of course, the vegans would say, well, it was the dairy that's making you fat, or you know, obviously those evil animal products. I mean, this is what we see, you know. No, it's it's kind of funny when you see vegans criticizing vegetarians because you know clearly it's uh, the meat products are making them fat. And and you, you know, you you've kind of been the case control because you've done vegan vegetarian. And now carnivore, and I think we can safely say it's not the meat products that are that are causing the problem. 